Oh, gosh, he nailed the cut bait. Wow. Nailed the cut bait, y'all. <laughs> Got one coming in on plastic, huh? All right, folks, you know me. I'm always trying to do something different to keep y'all interested. And I could be out catching redfish right now, which is something I love to do. But I just gave y'all a redfish show. So what I decided to do instead was to come fish this spillway. This is a spillway that connects to the Mississippi River, goes out into our wetlands, depending on river stages and things like that, how hard they run it, let the water come through right now. There seems to be just a little bit of water coming through. But my idea was to come and to catch some live bait, drop it down like you would on a snapper and catch. Instead, we had to go to plastic jigs to get these white bass just like that. So that's what we're doing. Catching white bass in a flooded spillway. My best good friend, Mr. Dane, got him a white bass. We're gonna sit here and catch them until they go out of style. So thank y'all for tuning in and we're gonna eat whatever we catch. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how we're catching them, what we're doing, and we appreciate y'all being here. Let's go have some fun. All right, folks, we've been fishing and fishing and fishing and they finally decided to start biting there it is big old giant white bass got two in the boat i wasn't rolling on the first one there he is y'all look at that hammer right there folks Whew. all right Let's see if we can make something happen now all right so Yep, and then let it sink. And then a slow roll. And that's pretty much it. Maybe I turn it on right here at dark. I don't know. There he is. Oh, missed him. Whew, every time right now. I think it's... Oh, crap. We got a fish back here, too. I got a fish on the pogey. Got a fish on the... Ah, pogey. Oh, he come off. Dang it. All right, maybe it's starting to turn on. All right, I'm gonna put a pogey back out. Try a live pogey, and then as it gets past me, I'll leave it. All right, I'll leave that pogey out. <sighs> Let's see if it was just a fluke or something's actually happening down there. Come on, take it. There you go. Got it? Yes? No? Check my pogey. You got my pogey. Oh, I'm sorry. Got him? Oh, he come off. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Oh, they're blowing up bait now. Yeah. I saw it see they skipping off the top over here. There he is. Oh, dang it. Had him right here. Might not even need to do all that. Let me just try just a regular. That's what I'm trying right here. All right, so as bad as I wanted the live pogies to be the ticket, it wasn't. Uh, they really, really are preferring this plastic. I guess we're just getting it right in front of them, getting it where it needs to be. Um, this is a H&H Cockahoe Minnow in the root beer color with a little uh, chartreuse tail. I don't know that, that it matters much, but that's what we've been throwing. And I think this is a 3 8 ounce jig head. Um, I've got, I think, a one ounce on mine, just so, because there is some current here, right? Like, so there's some, some current and some water pouring through, so you want to be able to get down a little bit when you can. But that's what we're catching them on, and like I said, let's keep on having fun, keep on catching. All right, folks, what we're doing is I'm fishing this spillway, okay? This spillway is not open completely. It's got a little bit of water pouring through, 
but tons and tons and tons of bait as you've seen from the cast net and there is white bass staged up here we're trying to skip it under there but it's hard to do it every single cast i don't know that it matters or not um if you get on oh lord look see i'm gonna throw right into that that was some kind of commotion they're blowing up right here oh my goodness they're blowing up right here why aren't they biting is the question we had no bites until really the sun started to get down a good bit now they're just kind of blowing up and going crazy here I thought maybe if we dropped baits, you know, pulgies down, we'd catch them. Uh, that did not work. So, here we are throwing plastics. Catching them about every, you know, seven to ten casts or so. I guess as the sun goes down, water temperatures drop, things get more active. I uh, know. Uh, oh, take me. Oh, dang. I have. Nice. Brother Dave just got him one. Did you even go under the bridge that time? No. No. Yeah, so that's not really mattering. It's just catching one that's staged up and ready to eat. So as you can see, I mean, bait is just blowing up and blowing up and blowing up. I don't know. I'm assuming that's the, the white bass working them from below. Uh, but when we throw into that, it's not like you catch. So I don't know. Gosh, look at that, y'all. That's crazy. So, like I said, we got out here probably around 5.30 or so through the net, you know, and, and, and really just had nothing. A, a whole lot of nothing. Then as that sun started to set over there, it just really turned on. And uh, we're going to stay out here till dark, you know. They might bite better the darker it gets. It's like a light switch turned on. Or a light switch turned off, rather. They're chasing grass shrimp. They're definitely eating grass shrimp. I can see the grass shrimp just busting there. I'm going to come back to this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just, they're busting on grass shrimp. So we may have a little bit bigger lure. Yeah, look at the grass shrimp. Just busting, 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 busting. We may be, have, a, I don't have an imitation grass shrimp, and I'm not going to sit here and try to cast that grass shrimp. So. I mean, it's all happening right here. You can see the fish just boiling the water right here. I, don't, I hope y'all can see it. I see them coming up right there. You'll see them come up and bust on those grass shrimp. There he is. All right. Oh, man. We are having a few come off for sure. Not, not loving that. I mean, you see the fish. I'm looking at them busting right here, y'all. Crazy stuff. Pretty cool. They're just annihilating grass shrimp. Look, they're everywhere. I mean, I could throw a cast net and probably catch a hundred of them right now. I... No. Gosh, this is crazy. All right, folks, for as many of them as I'm seeing and not catching, I'm going to have to try some bait. 
just to see if they're kind of lure shy or if I just need to go to a smaller bait maybe. Oh gosh, he nailed the cut bait. Wow. Nailed the cut bait, y'all. <laughs> Got one coming in on plastic, huh? Might as well leave that open. Alright. Let me see if this cut bait becomes the ticket. We got a few pogies left. So I just caught one on cut bait. And no sooner it hit the water. Got eaten. I wouldn't normally have it on a cork, but I'm kind of in a hurry here and want to tie it. Don't want to tie it. Main got him on the plastic, boy. That's just insanity around here, folks. <laughs> Off the wall. Wow. Off the wall. How about that? I don't think it matters at this point. Gosh, Dane is tearing them up on the jig over here, folks. Got him a nice big fatty, son. That's awesome. I'm about to quit wasting my time and go back to the jig. I just thought it was cool to watch him freaking come up and nail that thing. Damn, dude, you're killing him. Here's no bug spray, Dane. Huh? Here's bug spray. Yeah, I'm gonna need that in a second. I'll put it right here for you. Give it a side. Alright y'all, that was a really fun fish to catch. Definitely one of my new favorite fishes. Man, that was just so cool seeing them school up like that, attack that bait. When I cleaned them, they were full of those grass shrimp. So I'm going to be on the lookout for a good little imitation bait that I could toss in there and try to catch more of them. Today's dish is based off of these bad boys right here. That is some red beans. And a New Orleans tradition is to eat these on Monday. So it's Monday and we're going to cook some red beans. I'm going to show you how I do it in the pressure cooker. And what better dish to go with fried fish than some red beans. So we're going to fry those fish up, eat some red beans and rice, and it's going to be good. All right, so into your pressure cooker, you're going to add some onions, some bell pepper, and some celery. And go ahead and cook those down a little bit till they're translucent. All right, now this is the key ingredient to having a good red bean. This is a smoked ham hock. You can buy these at the grocery. Already smoked. You want to go ahead and drop those in too. Round those up. I've got three of them. I'm dropping all three in. Those are humongous. Round those off with your onions. Once those are browned off, go ahead and add all your beans. Don't miss that. Okay, good, get your beans in there. And then you're gonna add eight cups of water. Okay, I added some salt and pepper. We're gonna also add some garlic powder. Okay, we're also gonna add a couple bay leaves. And at this point, if you wanna add some hot sauce, you can go ahead and do that too. All right, and once you get it boiling, go ahead and close up your pressure cooker. Make sure it seals, pop your cap on, and just be watching for that cap to start shaking. All right, once that starts shaking real good, go ahead and turn your heat down to a medium. I'd set a timer for about 15 minutes because you're gonna wanna open it up and check it. Make sure you still have enough water, maybe stir it around a little bit. It's about a two hour process, but you definitely wanna stop it somewhere about halfway through just to assess what's going on in that pot. All right, so that was 50 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get my ham hocks out. Hi, 
Get all three of them out. Okay, hold on. Go ahead and stir up your beans. Make sure you got enough water. All right, start smashing your beans down a little bit. Let those ham hocks cool off and you wanna go ahead and get the skin and the meat and everything off and get it back into the pot. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add back two cups of water now. Stir that up, see what I get. You do not want that pot to go dry while it's cooking. All right, then I went ahead and got all that meat off the bones, got the skin, all the fat out, and we'll get that meat back in the pot. All right, stir it up, stir it in there. Get you some nice meaty red beans. A good smoky flavor, all came off of that ham hock. The bone, got you some good stock made in there. It's gonna be some good red beans, folks. Look at that. All right, and then we close it back up, put our cap on, and give it about another 30 minutes. Now, Milo's got something he wants to say. Don't watch my video called Creepy Wear. Because <laughs> it's so creepy. Okay. And it's called Creepy Wear, and, and the video, and there's like so much creepy sounds in. Then we do. Wait, this is Wait. your video? Yes, my video. You made a video called Creepy Whale? No, Creepy Whale. Creepy Whale. Yeah. Okay. Because we cannot find the creepy sound. Okay, got it. And we'll let these red beans come up back to temp and we'll cook them for another 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes was right on the money. I like to take a uh, potato masher and get in there and cream them up. Get them nice and thick. Mm, man, that looks good, folks. All right, y'all, there it is. Those white bass fried up perfectly. My favorite way to eat red beans like this is with fried fish. They just go together perfectly. I hope if you try it, you like it as much as I do. Get out there, get fishing, make you some red beans like this with some rice, and we'll see y'all next time.